the Lord for those good songs. I appreciate the songs and the truth in those songs. I'm glad there's a place called heaven. I'm glad there's a way to go there. And I appreciate everyone that's here today for this service. We're here in loving memory and honor of Harold Dean Slusher. Uh, I'd like to pray, and then I'm going to share the obituary information as we pray. Precious Heavenly Father, thank you for those songs, and thank you, God, for stirring our hearts. Thank you for letting us be here and for each one that's come. God, we just praise you today for being so good to us, God. Uh, Lord, we ask you to help us in this service and uh, bless us that each thing we do or say that uh, might be uh, in your will, Father, and it might touch people's hearts and help us. Lord, we all need help, and you're the one that can help all of us. And God, uh, we are told in your word that you're the God of all comfort, and Lord, we've experienced that to be true. And God, we praise you today, and we ask you and just uh, ask you for help today in this service. In Jesus' name, and amen. And uh, Harold Dean Slusher, age 52, passed from this life December the 15th, 2021, at 5.19 a.m. at Mercy Health St. Rita's Medical Center. Dean was born September the 1st, 1969, Lima, Ohio, to Dwayne and Sylvia Gooden Slusher, who preceded him in death. <clears throat> Dean was a 1987 graduate of Lima Senior High School. He had a self-employed lawn maintenance business under the name of the Ohio Grass Man until his health prevented him from working. Dean was an avid deer hunter. He loved golfing, shooting pool. He was a true outdoorsman. He loved his Kentucky Wildcats. Dean is survived by a brother, Donald, and Barbara Slusher of Temperance, Michigan, and a sister, Trish, and Les Plogger of Harrod, Ohio, a son, Gavin Hamlin of Lima, Ohio, and his fiancée, Mary Pullman of Lima, Ohio. He was preceded in death by his sister, Lisa Slusher. And of course, your presence here attests that he's survived also by many other relatives and many friends. And so we would ask you to just continue to pray, and we'll uh, turn back over for Linda to come sing. Then sings my soul 
once again. Thank the Lord for that good song. How great they are. That really expresses it a lot. I, I praise God we have a God that's great as he is. And our words can't explain how great he is. Uh, but when we trust him as the savior of our soul, we can feel that greatness in our soul. We still can't put it in words. But I praise God that we have a God that's so great. And I, I appreciate what I feel this morning. And I want your prayers as I share some things with you. I have some scripture on my heart. I want to share that with you. But I also want to share uh, some things that uh, Dean has told me. And he and I have talked about uh, numerous times. And uh, he wanted you to know that. And uh, I was uh, trying to decide whether to tell you what he said or read the scripture first, but I'm just going to tell you what he said first, and then God will, and I'll read the scripture. <clears throat> when I, <clears throat> excuse me, when I talked to Dean, he said, "Preacher, the best choice, the best decision I ever made, was when I was a young fellow that I came to an altar and I, I bowed my heart before heaven and I asked Jesus to save my soul." He said, and I got saved. Trish and I was talking about this. He, he probably might have shared this with more of you. I know he did Trish cause, and probably less. And, and uh, he told us about how he felt and that burden that was in there and that emptiness that was inside and how bad he felt when he was lost, when the gospel uh, let him see that he was lost and he needed a Savior. And then he shared about how good he felt uh, when he trusted Jesus and, and Jesus came into his soul and saved him by his grace, washed him in the blood and uh, freed him from his sin and uh, gave him an assurance that he's going to heaven. He said, boy, I felt good then. Now, <clears throat> I need to tell you the rest of some, some things that Dean told me. I feel like I need to share that with you. He said, preacher, uh, the best decision and choice I ever made is when I asked God to save my soul. But he said, I made some bad decisions and choices after that. He said, I, I didn't stay in church and live for the Lord. I didn't, I didn't get in and do the things I was supposed to. He said, I missed a lot of opportunity to help people. He said, but when and if I get better and I get out of this hospital, if God allows me to get able, I'm going to come back to church and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to go to church and live for the Lord. And I said, well, uh, Dean, I hope you get out, buddy. I hope you get to come back to church. But I appreciate your testimony right now. He said, there's some people I want to help. And he named a bunch of people. Now I'm not going to name the people he named. Or you'd know who you'd be anyway. Uh, I'm not going to name you. Uh, but he named some people and he said, I've really got a burden for those folks. I want them to get saved. I want them to get what I've got. I want them to know Jesus like I do because he said, whatever happens, if I, if I don't make it, I'm okay. He said, if I don't make it, I'm going to heaven because I'm saved. And sometimes uh, when I'd visit with him in the hospital or even at his home, and uh, uh, we'd get to talking and he'd say, preacher, uh, how about praying right now? And I said, buddy, I, we will. And God will, and with God's help, we'll pray. And we'd pray. And, uh, sometimes he'd weep, and he'd, he'd get my hand, and he'd say, I felt the Lord. He said, I'm glad I've got back where I can feel the Lord. And I said, I'm glad too, buddy. Uh, uh, God knows your need, and he knows your situation, and uh, he knows uh, how to help you, and he knows how to bless you. And so I'm glad that uh, uh, Dean left the testimony behind. He was just honest about it. He said, I'm saved. He said, I, I haven't done what I'm supposed to for the Lord. Uh, but he said, I know I'm saved. And he said, I can feel the Lord. And I said, but I know you're saved too. I can feel it when you're telling about it. And so I want to read some from the book of 1 Peter chapter 1. And uh, I'll read some scriptures down through you. Starting out with verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us, and that's when we're born again, uh, unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Then we come down to verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, in other words, our salvation is not by natural things, ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but here's how we were redeemed. It goes on verse 19 and says, But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. And then down to verse 23. Being born again. Boy, that's what we're talking about. And that's what Dean was talking about. About being saved. About being born again. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. 
not of natural things which deteriorate, but by the incorruptible things of God which are sure and steadfast and they don't fade away. You can count on them. Things in this life sometimes that I thought looked pretty secure and pretty solid, uh, just a little ways down the road, well, you couldn't even find it anymore. But what I found when I was 12 years old at an altar of repentance, when I asked Christ to save my soul, and he did, uh, I was 12 years old when I got saved. I'm 75 now. It's just as real to me now, if, if possible, even more real than it was when I was 12 years old because I'm closer home than I've ever been. Uh, we don't come here to stay always. And it goes on. Let me read that again. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And listen to this part. This is what I was talking about. got a little ahead of myself. <clears throat> Verse 24. For all flesh is as grass. And all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away. You can be young and healthy and stout and you can get a clear bill of health. Uh, still yet, uh, we're going to fade away one of these days. The natural part is not going to stay here forever. It wasn't meant to. But here's the good part. Here's the other part. Even though the, the grass is his flesh, listen, verse 25 says, But... The word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And then a scripture that goes along with that so well is over here in the book of Ephesians uh, chapter 2. And I'll just give you at least a couple verses in uh, verse 8 and 9 in chapter 2 in Ephesians. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that's not of yourself. See, uh, we don't work it out. Uh, we don't earn it. Uh, we don't deserve it. But we trust Jesus Christ as the Savior of our soul. And by grace, grace means when you're given something you didn't earn or you didn't buy, you didn't deserve. But grace means by the love of God, he offers it to you. And that's why we have it. That's why we have the opportunity. John 3, 16 said, for God so loved the world. That's all of us. And that was Dean. Praise God, it was Dean. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so when it says by grace are you saved through faith, that's not of yourself, it's a gift of God. Next verse says, not of works lest any man should boast. So praise God if we're saved and, and we need to live for the Lord. It goes on, let me get this verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So when we get saved, we need to live for the Lord. We need to honor God and glorify God and be a help to people. That's what Dean had recognized, and he was wanting to do that. And, and I believe, even though he didn't get physically to come back to church when he was still alive, I believe, I believe he's been a help to some people. And so, but I praise God, when we get saved, we need to live for the Lord. We're his workmanship created in two good works. We've got some things we need to do, and we don't have long to do it. If we live to be old age, it's just gone pretty quick. So live for the Lord. Get saved. If you're not saved, get saved. If you are saved, live for Jesus. But let this be a blessing to your heart. Let this be a blessing to your heart. Dean is out of his trouble. He's gone to be with the Lord. He suffered some, had some rough times. But you know, even when he'd had hard times, he'd had some pain and had some troubles. I'd visit him in the hospital. Uh, he'd come up with that big smile. Boy, he had a good smile. He had that big smile. And uh, he seemed like he was just so appreciative of whatever uh, that God had blessed him with. And I thank God that he did. And so just sum it up. Lay it close to your heart. God's good to us. God's blessed us. Uh, he gave his son so we could have salvation. Want to want to get one more uh, verse of scripture, maybe, uh, maybe from the 14th chapter. I'll just give you uh, from the 14th chapter of the book of John. Just come on the heart. Jesus said, "You you believe in the Father, believe believe in me, believe in the Father also. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you." And he said. He said he was going to go away and prepare a place for us. And he said, if I go away, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Heaven's real. If you want to go to heaven, you can. And so, praise God. And I'd like to, like to pray again as soon as we pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for salvation by grace through faith. God, we thank you that you gave your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. And God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that reminds us that and tells us that and uplifts us and helps us. God, I thank you for Dean, that he left a testimony that had power in it. It was witnessed by the Holy Spirit. God, we have that assurance he's gone to heaven to be with you. 
God, we praise you today for that, Father, and we thank you for each one that's come today, and for each one that's prayed, and the songs that were sung, and the things that you uh, let us talk about, uh, sharing Dean's experience and the scriptures you gave me to, to share with. And God has just uh, blessed my heart, and I, I pray that it touches the hearts of those that are in need. Uh, God, we just ask you, and we praise you in Jesus' name, and amen. We'll turn service back over to funeral director.